my strength is that I can take an actor and, and bring a very specific and yet very truthful performance out of them. But I think that's part of why I got into directing was to be able to help people. Because actors come to the table with a lot of great ideas. You just sort of have to guide and shape them. Sometimes I think of myself as an editor rather than a director. Are you looking at me, sir? Who's your idea? It's clearly a comedy. It's very silly. There's a robot that sings mariachi and uh, a talking monkey, amongst a lot of other hijinks. What are you doing? I don't know. So it's not serious. However, I think there are some serious things. One of the things that it talks about a lot is how things you seem to, like the space station, life sometimes seems to be going around in orbit a lot. And what happens is that the people on the space station have really sort of been just going around in circles and life is not really going anywhere. And then all of a sudden this talking monkey shows up in the airlock and everything changes. It's going to mean a reconnaissance mission. What is that? It means someone's going outside. This play is such an imaginative piece that I actually usually do a whole lot of research, but on this play I kind of I let the sci-fi sort of influence my thinking, but then let myself be more imaginative. Than, it's not like doing a historical play where you need to know how the world works. We are creating our own world. When there's that bee and everybody's falling and stuff, you're affected too. It, you're falling too. I consider the lights and sound actually another character. I added an extra week for tech so that we could work them in just the same way that we're working with the actors. Written in the play, there's a lot of funky stuff that happens. For example, um, there's a lot of forward winding and rewinding. So you'll see a scene and then somebody will go, what, but, but this also happened and you'll get a rewind. Freeze. That didn't happen like this one. I'm sure we'll find it. And then we'll go back in time and forward in time. And when I read it, I thought that's really cool. I like that kind of stuff. Actually, physically making it happen is really challenging. I'm sure we'll find someone. Let me out! Okay, sorry. Not this time. Because we'd be like, okay, so we have to go back to where we were two scenes ago. Did you have the helmet? Where were you standing? It has to be exactly the same. So every night has been kind of like working a Rubik's Cube. Once the sound goes, you know, where do I go? Where do I come from? Because I get right back up. You really believe we're gonna die, don't you? Okay, just be shy, I'm just gonna go check the radar. I'm hoping that the technical stuff that we add will make up that clear to the audience. That's my hope. If there is a bit of a message, it's that maybe we should let that talking monkey into our lives and let that activate us and make some change in our lives. And that's what happens to the crew. Once that monkey comes in, they realize something's going on and everybody's sort of forced to make active decisions, which they haven't had to do. And I personally think that that's a really good thing for all of us. It's easy to be passive and just sit back and let our lives happen to us. But really cool stuff happens when we are forced to become active. Even if it's a painful transition, it's usually a good thing. So it'd be nice if some people came away with that. But again, I hope they laugh first and foremost. That's the goal. <laughs> okay, good, 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 yes.